Sonic, the heart of your system. I'm Neil Wood for Kit Guru, fresh back from the Alpha Cool Halloween party in Germany. Could you guess? This is my occasional opinion piece, Leo says. So a thanks to Andreas and Nathaniel, the two bosses of Alpha Cool and Aquatuning, they are sister companies, I was able to talk to a bunch of people I don't normally talk to. Uh, for example, modders. I don't have much in common with modders because it seems to me that people that build uh, systems for shows and people that review cases have a certain amount in common. They want to put glitzy bits into cases and make them look pretty. Obviously, the people doing system builds for shows, Computex and such like, packs, they're, they're, they're going to another level. Modders, on the other hand, to my mind, they want to find problems. They like to rip cases apart. They get busy with the Dremel, the hacksaw, the belt sander and all the rest. They build distribution plates. Uh, what they start with and what they end with, two totally different things. It's like the custom car brigade, you know, taking out the suspension and such. Like They're not interested in working with the bits that are there. They throw them away and they start from scratch pretty much. There are many times actually I wonder why modders don't just you know build a case from scratch because what they end up with has no relation to the starting product. In particular, a chap called uh, Joe Powalski, I hope I've pronounced the name correctly, uh, who goes by the questionable uh, name of BJPC. Uh, he's a, a moderator on uh, Facebook for um, uh, Alpha Cool, and he had a number of systems on show at the Alpha Cool party. In particular, the Cosmopolitan and Ice Machine, or Ice Machina, is called near the end. The Cosmopolitan is I, I've seen him do pictures of this before. It's uh, essentially just a remarkable thing. Uh, but when you see the photos he took during the stages of building the system, you get more of an appreciation of what he's done as he 3D printed endless little figures and essentially built a city inside a PC case. Uh, it, it's just a remarkable the amount of work. It strikes me it's got an awful lot in common with a lot of people that build model railways. It's that type of thing. Uh, not my cup of tea, uh, but I appreciate fine work when I see it. And it took him about 300 hours of graft. And I, I look at uh, the Cosmopolitan and I think, well, there you go. Once you built it, you're not going to pull it apart. It would break your heart. So that case, uh, that system, I guess, is going to do the rounds of shows for some few years to come. And then we had Ice Machine or Ice Machina, which uses concrete. And I looked at it and I, I was just baffled. And he said that that system took him about 600 hours because he had to develop the concrete mix he was going to use. In addition to moulds and such, like the actual particular type of concrete and the what went into it, he went through endless mix, well, a number of mixes and various failures to uh, arrive at a result. And the result is, is quite mind-boggling. But again, when you see the photos of the stages he went through, it, it's all the more intriguing. And here's where I kind of had my revelation because I was having a chat with somebody else there um, and said, uh, but why? Why would you build, use concrete? Is there something particularly, you know, it seems to have all the things you don't want uh, from material for building a case or a chassis in this instance. To which the response came back, why not? And that was the point I suddenly realised, which is there's a why and there's a why not. Most people would say, why would I do this? Modders, why not? So I learned something. Uh, I was also chatting to various other people because uh, Alpha Cool, bless them, uh, in addition to having their own people there and people from Aqua Tuning, they also had uh, other people from other companies who are kind of their competitors of Alpha Cool, but because uh, Aqua Tuning sells a range of products from a, a number of brands, they are customers suppliers, that would be the word, suppliers to aqua tuning. So uh, competitors to Alpha Cool, suppliers to aqua tuning. Funny world, which meant I got to chat to various people, again, I wouldn't have expected to chat to while drinking Alpha Cool's beer. And I was led to thinking about buses, as in the control systems, uh, which isn't necessarily what you expect to do on a Friday night, but that's where I was at. The reason that my thoughts had moved to buses and control systems is uh, we ran a news piece on KitGuru about a week before the, aqua, the uh, Alpha Cool party uh, about this D5 Next pump from uh, Aqua Computer, another German company. And what it's all about is this, which is a D5 pump, but it's a different D5 pump. You'll see it's got an LCD display there and it's got basically the pump and a control unit and uh, they're clearly a pair but uh, you may or may not be familiar with uh, aqua computer they've had their aquara system for quite some while uh, we've seen them uh, on the likes of uh, eight pack systems and 
The idea is that that pump there and that control unit is their variant on a D5, uh, so you can connect to it and do all sorts of clever stuff. But the idea is, as I understand it from the reading of the, the paperwork, is that the D5 next becomes the hub of your cooling system. The logic being, I assume, that you have to feed power to a pump. You don't have to feed power to a reservoir or radiators or blocks or anything like that you've got to have power going there therefore you can have a display you can connect to it you can do stuff the pump is the natural hub of your cooling system and that got me thinking if a relatively small company in germany such as aqua computer is uh, going down this route and i applaud it entirely then what are the other companies doing? And uh, having various conversations, it uh, turns out that Alpha Cool Aqua Tuning is working on a bus called Ice Bus. Everything they do is seems to be called Ice, which can be used to control uh, RGB primarily, or in the first instance, but who knows where it goes from there. Uh, this is seemingly de derived from uh, an open standard called CAN Bus, uh, and you can control it uh, using Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or USB. Uh, but uh, I'm obviously fascinated to see where this goes products will be arriving hopefully in the very near future that uh, use uh, ice bus and then you've got the business of control now i'm going to assume here and now that the control system for uh, d5 next and the uh, alpha cool aqua tuning products will be separate they will not be compatible with each other i don't see why they would be you never know your luck but i'm guessing not um, and then we have uh, Watercool, watercool.de, another German company. They also are working on a control bus. I don't know the name of that, but again, I'm trusting it's going to be a similar kind of principle. And we know that Corsair has its Hydro X products coming. Uh, they've been teasing those on their website for quite some while. I would be just astounded if Corsair doesn't use IQ software to control its kit, or at the very least to interface with it and control lighting. But you'd hope it's going to be a bit more intelligent than that. IQ is a massive massive suite of software and if they don't integrate it with HydroX I would just be stunned and then I got to thinking EKWB where do they come into all this EKWB uh, uh, Computex was showing off wooden products albeit uh, cosmetic uh, bits and pieces but uh, no sign whatsoever of anything to do with uh, control so I'm guessing that EK must have something in the works if not they are presumably going to uh, step down the pecking order of uh, companies at the cutting edge of liquid cooling uh, but this would seem to be the way it's going, uh, which is uh, intriguing to me and very, very interesting. Uh, and I'm going to have to do some more talking to people, but I want to see these products because this seems like it's a real push forward in the world of cooling uh, for PCs. And I totally applaud it. And then we have some financial stuff. So Intel's just had its Q3 financials, uh, a day or two before the financials. Charlie Demergen of Semi-Accurate reported that Intel had knifed its 10 nanometer process. Intel responded very swiftly on Twitter saying, not so. And then during the Q3 financials, the Q&A afterwards, somebody asked the question, 10 nanometer on track, I presume that's a question mark, can you quantify progress over three months? To which the answer from Intel was, can't share exact details, yields are improving, more confident this quarter about shipping 10 nanometer in holiday 2019 compared to last quarter. Well, holiday 2019 is a year away, so that doesn't sound great, but on the other hand, that is clearly not. Uh, 10 nanometer knifed so we have to assume 10 nanometer is going to come to market in some way shape or form or they could already argue 10 nanometer has come to market already in very limited uh, specific models uh, i think it was lenovo brought it out uh, but in a way that's not the question for me the question for me is uh in addition to the process is what do they do in their architecture because it's monolithic chip seems to be holding intel back hugely now they clearly know this they're not stupid people so that wasn't really very revealing but the thing was that intel in those q3 financials was reporting colossal numbers record this record that records 19.2 billion dollar revenue with 7.3 billion dollar income Earnings per share was predicted to be $1.15 and turned out to be $1.40 and so on and so forth. Every single section of the Intel empire appeared to be going absolutely great guns, which is clearly how they always like to report things. If there were holes in the figures, goodness knows. I mean, the programmable solutions group uh, seems to be quite flat, basically half a billion, half a billion. But in the great scheme of things, uh, they are just going storming along, absolutely storming along. So Intel, a company that in my mind's eye 
has no roadmap for the next couple of years. It uh, It's short of uh, supply across the piece. They can't make chips fast enough. They can't move from 14 nanometer to 10 nanometer, and yet they cannot ship processors in every single sec uh, every single area of its portfolio. Can't ship them fast enough. Really don't know what to say about this. Uh, on the one hand, they look like they're a dead duck. On the other hand, they're making money like it's going out of fashion. It is remarkable. AMD, by contrast, released its Q3 2018 financials and it slightly missed its uh, expected figures. Uh, revenue, $1.65 billion for the quarter. Operating income, $150 million. Now, this is uh, numbers in the black rather than the red, which compared to where uh, AMD has been in the past is happy days and big news. Nonetheless, compared to those Intel figures, it's a drop in the ocean. So, very well done AMD, but, you know, they are limping along, relatively speaking. But the, the stunning thing was that those figures, that slight miss, was uh, it, le it led to their share price dropping 9%. Now, AMD's share price has gone gangbusters in the past, uh, well, during this year. But to see their share price dive like that was a real surprise. Now, when they look at their financials, when you look at their financials, they are more or less flat which is unexpected because it feels as though AMD is just, just on the rampage, but the, the facts are the facts. And it would seem that a part of this is that AMD graphics are just nowhere. Now, we think the mining boom has finished. It's over and done with. Uh, I'm not entirely clear whether they're, they're still shipping graphics galore to miners. But uh, the impression given is that miners who bought kit are continuing to run it, but miners aren't buying new kit. That might be wrong, but that's how it feels. So uh, AMD graphics, what have they, they got there? CPUs are going very nicely. Um, and then, of course, Epic is moving into a whole new sector that AMD has just had a 0% market share of in general terms. I mean, AMD's uh, share of the server market over the past few years has been, you know, one or maybe two percent uh, it's just intel wall to wall epic would appear to have huge potential there uh now when you look at the present it seems just grotesquely unfair that intel's going along making money like it's going out of fashion amd on the other hand is barely making a penny uh, when you look at for example threadripper 2920x and 2970wx which are now on sale uh, they appear to have just killed uh, Intel Core X, which is the uh, the ninth gen parts that are coming soon, uh, we're told this year, we don't know when exactly. Uh, it's Skylake X of the soldered heat spreader uh, on the X299 platform. And it would seem to me that uh, Threadripper has just given the answer to the question, should I buy Skylake X? And the answer is, why would you? Now, obviously, Intel will continue selling in workstations and high end desktop, but as things stand, Threadripper appears to be the answer to a good many people's question there. And then we have Epic. Now, when Threadripper moved from the two chip to the four chip layout in the second gen, uh, we knew that the seven nanometer Epic ROM processor uh, was coming in 2019. It is apparently sampling at the moment. We don't know if it's going to have to be revised or respun, but uh, it is uh, you know, imminent. And uh, my understanding from uh, various rumors floating around now, which appear to be solid, is that Rome is going to be a nine chip layout, eight plus one, uh, eight chips on seven nanometer, and then a central chip, uh, which is the IOX, which will be probably 16 nanometer. Uh, this should all be TSMC. And the figures for this are just, just huge. I mean, we've, we've heard a certain amount of what Rome can do. So support, for example, for four terabytes of DDR4 3200 megahertz memory per socket. On paper, Rome just appears to be the future. Uh, for servers if you don't have uh, roam uh, during 2019 it's just because you're cautious which is absolutely admirable we don't want the world falling apart because of some bug that comes to light in time and we expect the prices to be around the five thousand dollar mark which will undercut xeons like it's going out of fashion and yet make uh, amd absolute fortunes so win-win Therefore, I think we can say that at uh, Computex 2019, we can predict Lisa Sue will stand there saying, Rome is here, Epic is triumphant, you know, and, and some play on those words, presumably. And this leads me to think, leads me to wonder, what's going to happen with the next Threadripper, Threadripper 3000, which uh, is codenamed Castle Peak? Uh, 
which is due to be 7 nanometer and Zen 2. I wonder if that's going to be just in inverted commas, the current Threadripper layout, four chips, just a smaller process, perhaps more cores, but uh, even if it's the same number of cores, you know, faster, less power. I mean, that'd be a pretty blooming good processor, and I wouldn't object. I'm wondering whether Socket TR4 actually has the potential to go down the Rome epic route and do more clever things. It would seem there's going to be a significant fork in the road or roadmap. Uh, with the 7 nanometer Epic Rome going off one way and Threadripper going in a different direction. It makes sense, they're two very different markets. At the moment, the two processors have a certain amount in common, and that is going to diverge. Uh, Threadripper, meanwhile, is looking as though it's going to get more and more appropriate to the desktop. AMD has indeed released the new version of Ryzen Master. As I said in the last, uh, Leo says it is indeed uh, Ryzen Master 1.5. Uh, so there are two versions of uh, Ryzen Master now. You get version 1.4 for first-gen Threadrippers and for Ryzen's. You get version 1.5 for second-gen Threadrippers, and that gives you this new dynamic local mode, uh, which allows you to uh, migrate, uh, auto automatically migrates which apps run on which memory, such that uh, the more demanding apps are running on the local memory rather than having to hop and step through uh, remote cores. So 2019 would appear to belong on the C in the CPU market to AMD. A remarkable thing to say sat here in late 2018. Nonetheless, the facts of the matter are AMD financially is doing well but not great. Intel is going absolute gangbusters. Formidable, formidable to see. Look around, you'll see a bell button. Hit that bell button, we'll tell you about new videos as they become available. This is my opinion piece, Leo says, for Kit Guru, and I'm Leo Waldock.